Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm, I realized that I don't actually get nervous public speaking, but I was incredibly nervous before this started, and I realized it's because of the election. So I hope, so. <laughs> like, don't tell me what happens, okay, unless it's good. Um, and I, I won't say anything about political leanings, but you can take a guess, I guess. Anyhow, um, yeah, thanks for, uh, for being here. I'm here to talk about open tracing, um, and uh, I'm excited to, um, to tell you a little more about it. So I think a lot of people don't even, aside from open tracing, are like, well, what's tracing? Why do I care about this? So let's talk about that first. So uh, we all know about microservices. I think it's received enough um, buzzword. Actually, it's fun. Go on, go on uh, Google Trends and search for microservices and then serverless computing. It's just like this total insanity, hype curve stuff. Um, and they're here to stay. They actually deliver a lot of value, and I, I believe in that value. Um, that said, they, they break your monitoring tools. Monitoring is supposed to tell stories about, distributed, uh, about systems, whether they're distributed or not. And as soon as your, uh, as your monolith, in this case, this uh, rectangle that is divided into libraries, as soon as that monolith is decomposed into microservices, uh, if you previously told a story about what happened in your process, um, in that way, with this squiggly line going through a single process, that story is gone. And what we have found uh, in our conversations with numerous companies uh, that have adopted this sort of technology, what they've been telling us is that um, as they decouple their systems and their transactions, you know, lo and behold, are no longer on any single process. They are literally unable to answer the most basic questions about what's happening. And if this doesn't sound painful, then you haven't gotten there yet, but it's extraordinarily painful. And the solution historically for this has been uh, distributed tracing. It still is a solution, and it's wonderful. Um, so the question is, why isn't it ubiquitous? If tracing is so great and it's the only way to tell a good concrete story about transactions and distributed systems, why isn't it ubiquitous? And that is what open tracing is here for. Um, the, the reason is that instrumentation has been too difficult. It's required you to instrument not just across processes, but across library boundaries in a way that often couples you to poorly engineered uh, libraries that um, you know, were written in an afternoon or a weekend by someone. Um, uh, you're locked into vendors in many cases. Uh, you can try and monkey patch things in Python or JavaScript or something, uh, and then you know the version that you're monkey patching gets upgraded and it breaks your production code or something like that. This happens uh, frequently. This is another common failure mode for distributed tracing. Um, APIs aren't consistent from one language to another. Even the nouns and verbs aren't necessarily consistent from one language to another. Uh, and handing off the context, which is the whole point of tracing, from one library to another or from one process to another is also something that requires some amount of rigor and standardization. So this is why tracing instrumentation has been too hard. Open tracing um, specifically exists to solve that problem. Unlike a lot of open source technologies, open tracing isn't something you run. It's a standard. Um, it's an API standard. It's not, like a, it's, it's not something that you deploy. It's something that you program against. Um, and uh, there are three constituencies that care about open tracing. Uh, one is uh, developers who are working on cloud native or microservice based applications, as I've been talking about. Uh, those are typically people who work at large software engineering organizations, but it's, it can also be, at this point we see uh, it's easy enough to build microservices that you have three-person companies that have dozens of services, hundreds of services, and so they care about this too. Um, open source frameworks, uh, I'm thinking especially about things like gRPC or Finagle or um, anything having to do with control flow like promises and future libraries. Those things have a lot to say about tracing, and they, they have a role here. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, boy. Um, uh, and. And also um, uh, tracing or monitoring systems. Uh, so that should be obvious, but it's beneficial if you're building a tracing system to, to bind yourself to, um, to a standard and rather than trying to conquer the world with your particular instrumentation library. Uh, so this is open tracing's constituencies. Um, the architecture is, is pretty straightforward. Within a process, you have this API that sits there, and it's, it's uh, a dividing line between um, application logic, frameworks like I was describing, control flow packages, RPC systems, um, existing instrumentation that you may have in a different format, 
and downstream things like Zipkin, um, Jaeger, which has been open sourced by Uber just last week and is a, a pretty compelling uh, distributed tracing system of itself um, based on, on Zipkin, actually. Um, Lightstep, um, uh, there's uh, actually just since I made this slide, Hocular, which is a uh, 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 something coming out of Red Hat is another uh, distributed tracing system that supports open tracing, but there are many places the data can go. Um, beyond that, even, I, uh, I, I was the one who came up with uh, the name open tracing. I sometimes regret it. It's, it's really more like open instrumentation. It's uh, an API that can be used for many things. You can easily bind open tracing to an existing metrics system like a stats to your Prometheus based system. Um, you can do vanilla logging uh, either out of it or into it. Um, it supports something called baggage, which I'll show later in the demo, which is actually very powerful based on a SOSP best paper uh, two years ago or last year, I can't remember, um, called pivot tracing. Um, and it's a very young project. Um, that baby is the same age as open tracing. Um, it's 10 months old. And, um, it's, uh, it's been adopted uh, by many companies that um, have, I think, just experienced a lot of pain in this area, and open tracing addresses many of, of those pain points. And, um, and it's been really exciting to, to see the community grow around it. Um, OK, great. So I, I tried to speed through the intro stuff. Um, I, I now need to talk a little bit about the history of tracing before I get some demos, uh, which will be interactive, by the way. You all can participate. Um, so this is uh, one of the earlier distributed tracing meetups um, in 1755. Um, this is a salon in France. Um, uh, they didn't have donuts yet, but we'll get to that later. Um, and uh, my point here is, is partly that I, I just like talking about the idea of a distributed tracing salon, which we're having tomorrow uh, as well, but uh, also that this has been going on for a long time. Like, tracing is not a new thing. I think that in our industry, history repeats itself every five or 10 years. That's certainly the case here. Supercomputers had things like this, too, in the 70s. It's not like this is a new idea. Um, but every time we have a new platform to build it on, uh, new questions come up, and there's a lot of discussion to be had. And open tracing being as young as it is, and this audience being as skilled as you are, I was actually hoping that I could recruit some of you to, to show up tomorrow morning at um, 9.50 uh, to 11.45. Anywhere in that window, we're having kind of a drop-in thing uh, with free donuts and coffee. It's a distributed tracing salon with donuts, um, and there will be things for absolute beginners where you can you know, learn the ropes of using open tracing with Zipkin, um, as well as people who are a little more sophisticated, uh, up to experts who are building tracing systems and, and want to you know, exchange ideas and so on. It'll be fun. Um, but you might wonder, with all these donuts, where do they come from? That's a good question. So they come from donutsalon.com, which I built last weekend and is taking off like, very quickly. It's donuts as a service. Um, and uh, it's blitz scaling through hypergrowth. Um, it's microservice oriented. It has concurrency-driven latency problems. And um, thankfully, it's built with open tracing, so we can all try it out. So what I was hoping you all can do is uh, maybe just take a minute to not look at the lecture results, get out your mobile phones, go to donutsalon.com on your mobile device, and order some donuts. I'm going to do it here. Uh, Let's see, so, yeah, right. So this is donutsalon.com. Um, we have six donuts you can buy. Uh, it's free, actually. Um, as you select them, oh, wow, this is good. So it might take a while, and that means you guys are actually doing it. So Donut Salon, I, I did it last weekend. Uh, it does take, um, it does have some concurrency-related issues. Um, it seems like people are really doing their homework. I actually applaud you all for, for actually following my directions. But there, we do have this profound problem in that I've built this donut as a service, uh, and it's not working. We're having a success disaster because load just went from one user to you know, many more than one user. So I think there's, um, there's a question here, you know, like um, what's happening? So let's talk about Donut Salon's architecture for a moment before I, I look at some traces. So um, it was bootstrapped as a startup um, with a single donut mixer, a single donut fryer, and a single donut topper. So these are all services. You've got your web client, which is on your phones right now. And uh, unfortunately, I'm realizing now that I'm seeing what's happened to the site that it was probably wrong to only have one donut at a time going through these queues. Uh, they're enforced with a, a mutex. Um, thankfully, I've instrumented the mutex with open tracing. So uh, we might have some hope of understanding what happened here. Um, 
So yeah, let's look at some traces. Um, I'll, I'll start, um, and being that it's open tracing, this is, um, we're not tied to a particular vendor. Um, I'm, I promise this is not supposed to be light step pitch, but I am gonna use light step just because I'm more familiar with it. Yeah, you can see, <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. So when I was, pretend, when I was going through this demo with, uh, earlier, I, I was trying to generate real load, but I, I couldn't top what you guys have done here. So anyway, um, this is load over the last six hours. Um, just in the last couple of seconds, really, there's been significant regression in the P99.9 .9 latency. Um, and some of these traces are taking 1.2 minutes. I'm sure there are others that haven't come through. I'll, I'll open up a few of these um, just to give you a sense. Yeah, so it looks like we've got some serious problems. Um, this is a, a, a typical distributed trace. We have uh, at the beginning here, you, we're actually monitoring from the browsers themselves. And so this took about 46 seconds. Um, it uh, talked to our web server, as I showed you in the, this, di uh, this diagram here, um, talked to our web server. And, um, and then the web server uh, has a serialized process like any donut would have to go through. You have to mix the batter, you have to fry it, you have to top it. Uh, it looks like topping is going pretty well, but um, frying is really, you know, chewing up a lot of our critical paths. So I'm going to expand that. And yeah, it turns out that this instrumented lock has um, told us that we're waiting behind 141 transactions. Now, if I go back to Donut Salon, I, I really want to illustrate this feature of baggage. That I actually think, I mean, obviously this is all sort of a joke, but it's actually not totally a joke in that this is, I think, pretty powerful. So I've assigned a, an ID to every, a random ID to every web client here. Uh, it's just a four-digit number, nothing interesting. Um, that, uh, that ID has been added in open tracing to what's called the baggage, which is carried along with the request across the distributed system in a transparent way. So it's really important to note that the application code never cares about that baggage. Um, it, it doesn't even really have to know about it. Um, and open tracing is able to propagate this context through, um, through the entire uh, system. And that allows us to do some um, pretty exciting things uh, in that in a mutex lock way down the stack, obviously you can't have a mutex lock that is going to know about donuts, but you can have a mutex lock that knows about baggage. So I can say, well, this mutex lock is instrumented that if, if a mutex takes too long to acquire, it's going to dump out some additional information. And so in this case, it's going to dump out the 141, oh, darn it, that's a bummer. Let me pick one that wasn't quite as long. Um, uh, so yeah, like, it's going to dump out the transactions that are ahead of it. So you can see that cinnamon donuts are actually very popular, so that's a good thing to know. Um, and there are a bunch of different clients that are ahead of us in this queue um, to have uh, access to the fryer. And this can be really powerful if you think about a real system in that um, if, if any time you have a latency issue, it's probably due to some kind of throughput concurrency bottleneck. And being able to actually root cause where these requests came from in a distributed system is, is actually fairly profound and something that is not possible with logging at the local level. This state that we're dealing with here didn't come from the mutex. It came from several layers up in the stack, and, and that's pretty important. Um, I just wanted to also illustrate that this works just as well with Zipkin, um, which is awesome. Uh, I see Adrian Cole in the audience, actually, Zipkin maintainer. Um, uh, I can find traces, um, same instrumentation. The only difference is that we, uh, we, we bound um, the, uh, uh, the open tracing API to Zipkin instead of uh, to this other tracer at initialization time. So this is the idea with open tracing, is that you can get pretty detailed high fidelity instrumentation for your system, get distributed transactions with some powerful features, and decouple yourself from a provider. Um, so with that, I'm going to cease giving my demo. Um, uh, yeah, so vendor neutrality is really important. It's not just important because you don't want to lock yourself into a vendor. I mean, that's always true. But it's particularly important in this case because this decision about which vendor you use isn't just used in your own application code. It also needs to be made by, well, the non-decision needs to be made by every aspect of your system, including open source libraries that you depend on. So vendor neutrality is really important because if you use a, a web services framework that hasn't chosen the same provider as you, that would break your traces. And with open tracing, you don't have to make that decision up front. Um, and yeah, uh, I think the, the traces um, reveal a lot about system behavior that would be difficult to uncover with basic logging or time series monitoring on its own. And this does scale well in the real world. And we, you know, we definitely see open tracing installations in the wild that are generating millions of spans per second without, without issue. Um, so I wanted to get into talking uh, about Kubernetes a little bit since this is um, so many of you here care about Kubernetes. Uh, so getting quality tracing is a matter of getting enough breadth 
uh, of, of what we call spans in the sort of open tracing dapper Zipkin model uh, and, um, and links between traces uh, called references. Um, if you only have spans, um, it's basically just logging. It's useful, but it's not sufficient to do the sorts of things I'm talking about. If you only have references, that would be sort of like just tracing, uh, not even tracing, but just monitoring network links or something like that, but not being able to actually say what those messages are about. So it would be at level three networking uh, monitoring, which is valuable as well, but still not tracing. Um, spans are actually very easy in, uh, in a Kubernetes environment or something similar to it. Um, you can uh, incorporate something like a level seven client, uh, uh, client proxy like um, Linkerd or Envoy. Um, and you can easily generate one span per request. Uh, that's, again, it's, it's cool, but it's also just logging. Um, what's more difficult is to uh, get the references to, to work. So that's to connect the dots between clients and servers and ingress and egress in a process. And, um, and this is something that I actually, um, I have been thinking a lot about, and I think open tracing in 2017, a big piece of our, our development as a project will be to have, uh, uh, get as close as we can to zero touch integration, and this is a big piece of that. So if anyone thinks this is fun, I'm going to replug the idea of coming tomorrow morning and, and talking to me about it, because I actually really want to solicit ideas. Um, the basic idea of how this would work, and we have seen this in practice in, in large scaled out commercial installations that I'm not allowed to, cite the specific companies, but it can be done. But I want to generalize it. What they did wasn't, in my mind, totally generalized. Um, you have this process where an HTTP request comes in, enters an app process. Uh, Open Tracing has something called extract, which is a way to, um, to get the tracing context out of that thing in a way that's, that's uh, pretty abstract and vendor neutral. Um, three is just your winding path of whatever your application code does, your business logic, et cetera, which I have no say in. Um, the application eventually makes an outbound HTTP request, and this is where it gets interesting. The, um, it's possible, um, and I want to talk more about how to do the specifics of this. I can't go into it in detail uh, with the time allotted. Um, uh, the application makes or an HTTP request via a local proxy, which would run either as a daemon set or you know, within a pod or so on. Um, that proxy can do what's called uh, an open tracing inject call, which is uh, just the complement to extract. It will. Uh, add the tracing context um, to the outbound request, wherever it's, it's bound for, and, um, and then the proxy forwards it to its peer, and this entire process starts over again. This basic flow um, is, is something that I think is very exciting. If we can figure out how to do it properly, um, it would be possible to have uh, non, you know, uh, non built on a weekend donut services, like real honest God services, we can do integration with distributed tracing with almost no application modification. We've seen this at companies that happen to have built something like this, and I really want to generalize it. So I think this is really exciting and would take, well, would, would take good advantage of many of the features, that, uh, the features within Kubernetes. Um, yeah, if that didn't make any sense, you can have your cake and you can eat it too, like this wonderful child. Um, I think it's possible to um, get good quality tracing and uh, avoid the pain and suffering of, of adding a lot of instrumentation or even really changing your application in meaningful ways. Um, if we can add um, the existing API standardization of open tracing um, to a, a little bit of magic um, be between uh, applications, client proxies, and, um, and then the network that connects uh, uh, containers to each other. Um, final plug, uh, just for some of the topics we'll be talking about tomorrow morning. Um, it's definitely a drop-in kind of thing. We have, um, you know, some cool T-shirts and donuts and stuff like that. Uh, but I, I really, I, I, it's sad to me to come to a conference like this and just talk to talk at everyone in the audience. I would really much rather talk with everyone about this stuff. So please come by if this strikes your fancy or if you just want to get started with with the basics. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's it for me. Uh, uh, you can be in touch with me, email, Twitter, uh, or you can follow Open Tracing, which I would recommend doing. It's a, a pretty fun account with a lot of uh, interesting uh, links to related technologies. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot.